Welcome back, Stoner Squad, and of course, a big welcome to all those new to the channel. My name is Danny Stoner. Thank you for joining me to continue our tutorial campaign as Crete. So we are going to pick up where we left off and go to fight another guy to take even more land off him. But before we do, there is something I wanted to talk about that I had, didn't really talk about last episode, even though we used them. And it's kind of the organization of the armies here and what this interface is all about. Now, the first thing you'll see up here, the portrait of the guy here is the person commanding your levies. Now, who commands your levies? Well, to do this, levies basically are raised on a regional level. The game is divided into a load of regions, each region divided into provinces. Um, so as you can see, so there's the provinces within the region, and this is the different regions. So levies are raised on a regional level under the command of the governor of the region. Now, the capital of your nation is located in what is called the capital region and this will always be under the command of your ruler um, no matter what so if you had any let's say for example if i was to raise another lead and if i had land in asia and i was to raise a levy in asia then the governor of asia would be at the command of that levy and not the king so that's basically how that works um, you have on this interface here so let's quickly open this up and see what everything is so here you have a bit of information here. You have the army's morale, um, the how much it's currently at, the maximum being 100%. Uh, before you fight a battle, you do want to make sure you wait till it gets 100%. Uh, you also have the army's food capacity, so how much food they make, uh, how much food they have left per month. And, um, and basically when you're fighting, um, you lose food per month. So an army has a carrying capacity. This carrying capacity can be increased with different unit types, like the supply train, which increases the capacity. And when they're away in enemy territory, it uses a certain amount of food. To see what it uses, just hover your mouse cursor over the bar, and you'll see. The army currently has a maximum, has six food, sorry, a maximum of 12, um, and it consumes 0.64 food supplies, food stored this month. So each month, it will use 0.64 food. Um, and uh, when we're at war in enemy territory, by the way, um, so it use 0.64 food until it goes down to zero. When it hits zero, you lose massive attrition. Now, in order to regain this food, you just need to keep your army in allied territory, and it will take food from the food reserves, which is up here, and it will fill your army with it. So that's how that works. Um, then you have, of course, the total strength of the army here, um, which is like the number of men you have. You have a load of other things up here, a load of little kind of information modifiers, a chance of loyalty gain, so the chance... The, troop, the amount of chance that the troops have of becoming loyal to the commander. Uh, you also have the enslavement, the enslavement efficiency, sorry. So the chance of uh, capturing enemy pops when you capture territory. Um, and you also have a load of other things down here, which is kind of... Uh, God, all this is really important. And I'm trying to formulate my thoughts as I'm speaking to you guys. Um, so here you have a load of information so you can choose your tactics. Um, tactics are different kind of battle tactics when you fight. And some tactics are more efficient against others. Um, you can see how efficient they are against others by looking at what they're good against. So here you can see, for example, there's a shock tactic. It's effective against envelopment and Padma Vuiha, and it's weak against bottleneck and phalanx. And what happens is, uh, depending on the composition of your army, so the type of troops in there, some tactics will be more effective than other. As you can see, for example, our bottleneck tactic would be effective at 100% because we have archers and heavy infantry in there which kind of make really effective for the bottleneck tactic. If I was to fight somebody by using this bottleneck tactic and we came up against an enemy army that was using either shock or hit and run tactic, then our soldiers would do 20% more damage to the enemy soldiers. If I was to come up against somebody using either skirmishing or cavalry skirmish, then I would do 10% less damage and, of course, receive more damage from the enemy when he attacks us. So, um, tactics, you really need to kind of pay attention to what you have. It's basically a guess game, uh, depending on the composition of enemy armies. Um, if you basically fight someone and you kind of see what tactic is using, remember it, and then as soon as you engage him again, remember to put the corresponding tactic. That's kind of how I do it. Um, if you want um, a detailed guide, sorry, on military matters and how battles work, then I have done a guide. I've put the link in the description below. Do go and check it out. It does help you how to see how battles are fought on the map. Uh, but anyway, just to kind of give you a quick overview. Basically here, you can organize your kind of lines. So what you have, you have the primary cohort. So these are the first people to engage the enemy. Then you have your secondary cohort. These are the guys who engage the enemy after the primary cohorts have been killed or fled. And then you have your flanking units if you have any. Um, so at the moment we only have archers and heavy infantry. I don't really have any flanking units, so it's pretty pointless. I'll put archers in the first line, heavy infantry in the second line, and then flanking. I could just probably even put my 
I could probably put heavy infantry on the flank as well. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't even change anything because um, I really don't have that many men. But if you want a detailed guide on like this section here and how lines and different kind of cohort, like primary, secondary cohorts and flanking works, then do go and check out the miniature guide I did. Uh, you have a load of other buttons up here as well which help. We can do a load of extra stuff. Just do go through them and look at them. I ain't going to go through everything because they all do different things. Uh, but the important ones are up here. Attachments allowed or not. So you can allow an ally to attach his troops to you. This is to build a road. You need certain conditions to be filled. Like have civic advances is greater than level 4. And then you can build roads. Um, drill army. That's only for legions. Legions it allows them to gain more experience. Um, at the cost of, of uh, maintenance cost and loyalty chance gain. You also have Force March if you can, have the Invention Quick March, it allows your men to march faster at the cost of minus 100% army recovery and plus 50% army weight modifier. And you have Unit Reorganization which increases your reinforcement speed and your army morale recovery at the cost of maintenance cost um, and army movement speed. This is good if you lose a battle and you want to kind of reorganize your troops which means refill your ranks quickly and recover your morale as quickly. So there we go. A useful tip is you have a select unit objectives here and you have a couple of automated like kind of visions you can do for your army. So basically if you're like pretty big and you have a load of different levies and you're fighting a big war over different kind of large areas and you can just assign an army to do like different things. So for example if I wanted my enemy to defend my borders and retake territory I can click defend borders or assign that there and this army would just kind of do its own thing, defend my borders and retake territories. Uh, when it can take it. Um, so basically up to you to kind of check it out and look what is what. Um, so that is that, just a kind of quick brief overview of that. If you go down here, you can see the subunits. So you have your cohorts and you can see how the different kind of... Um, well, you have the total number of soldiers and then if you go to the subunits, it's a different cohorts. So we have like four... We have 2,000 archers, which is four cohorts of archers. So four cohorts of 500 men. And you can see them all here. You can see how much morale they've got, how much experience they've got. Um, which reduces damage taken in combat, so the higher the experience, the less damage they take in combat, and of course their combat strength. So that is that. Uh, now that is done, what we're going to do, we're going to continue our fighting. Again, uh, thank you for watching. If you do, if this is helping you and you're enjoying it, please don't hesitate to give the video a thumbs up, and of course subscribe to the channel if you want more stuff like this. I really do appreciate it, and um, hopefully this will help you kind of get to grips with the game. I am trying to be as clear as possible and talk about a load of stuff. It's basically, as I see something and I think it's worth talking about, I will talk about it. Um, hopefully it's clear for you guys. Um, I really hope it is. Uh, but anyway, next thing we're going to do is probably take out this guy here. You've got no friends, um, so I can easily destroy you. You, I can bring in my friends if I wanted to. So what I'm going to do is wait a little bit longer here so I can actually replenish my food. Now here I only have 6 out of 12 food. I want to replenish my food supply here before I move out. So what we shall do is wait a little bit, gain a little bit of extra food, and then strike him. Because taking the forts can be a little bit of a pain, and I don't want to lose any men due to attrition. I just want to kind of stockpile as much food as I can. So here you can see, per month we're gaining one food. And what will happen each month is we'll take one food out of this. You can see from units resupplying in the province, one. So that's how that works. So we'll resupply a little bit, quickly do that, gain maybe about... 10. I don't want to go to the maximum. I don't need to. I would like to declare before he gets an ally or something. So we'll kind of pay attention to that. Uh, Revenge of the Furies, another event due to the Daidoki Wars. If you want to read it, just pause the video and please do be my guest read it. But again, I'm not going to read it because this is just a tutorial series and not a serious campaign. Um, why have I lost a few men here? Ah, uh, the Levied Pop is missing. Uh -huh. So maybe the reinforce have to go back over here. That's interesting. I don't really understand that. I thought I could replenish from here, but apparently I can't. Have I lost one of the pops here that I used to levy? I don't know. And I can't see because this is the actual levied kind of um, army. So if I was to disband this and then relevy it and then try to relevy again, I would have extra men. Why? Because I have got more pops that are all, that of our integrated culture, which are these pops from here. These are all Cretan again. And of course, the more integrated pots we have, the more levies we can raise. So it's important to remember that. Levies are raised from your integrated pots in the region. The more integrated pots in the region you have, the more levies you can raise. Uh, but anyway, let's go to war now. I can do it easily. I've got nine food. I can easily take this guy out quickly. I'll bring in my buddy Arcadies. Do you want to bring in Arcadies? Do I want to bring him in? I don't think so. I think I can take this guy on his own. He's got a level 1 fort, and it's really not that much. I think it's a level 1 fort. Let's check. 
It is a level one fort. So I can easily get this, guys. So what I'm going to do is declare war on you. I'll call you in anyway, just in case. And we'll take Crete as the war goal again. We've got the free claim from the mission, obviously. Um, so we've got the war going. I'm going to march on you. And we're going to quickly get you before you raise your troops. Again, this is a neat little trick. I can get in there before he raises them. So since we have got on his land, he cannot raise his levies, which means we will not be fighting him losing any men. So all we need to do now is wait again and kind of take this down. Now here we can do something pretty cool. There is a fort, there is a port, and this port, um, it reduces the effectiveness of our siege because it's not blockaded, and it means you can get supplies in. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign a commander to our navy, and I want to assign the best possible guy. You want to assign a guy with the highest marshal, because marshal affects dice roll. Fights in this game are affected mainly by dice roll. The better the dice roll, the more kind of damage your men do. So that's how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign the best guy. And this guy's got 10 marshal. You want to make sure he's loyal because disloyal people or disloyal commanders do their own thing with their armies and you can't control them. And this guy's also got trait. You want to make sure that they have a decent trait. Now this guy's got Sea Dog, which increases the ship capture chance by 10%. Hey ho, that is fantastic. So you are now going to go and deal with this guy. Now the naval combat is pretty much the same principle. You have primary cohorts, secondary cohorts, and flanking ones. So just kind of set it up as you want. You have tactics as well uh, that you can choose uh, depending on what you've got. And um, there are also different types of sea battles. You have coastal sea tiles and you have open sea tiles, which give you completely different things, um, notably in terms of combat width. I think that's what it's like. So now we're going to go and deal with you. We have enough men. Um, I have one extra ship than this guy, and he's going to leg it, but I do want to catch this guy. I want to beat him and take his ships. If we can capture his ships, it is an extra navy. Ah, so he's hidden. So now he's gone to port to dock, and we can't get him because he's hidden in there. But what we can do now is blockade his port. So what will happen is when we occupy this, his ships will have to come out of port because we own the whole province, or they hold the territory. His ships are no longer safe in port, and they'll move out and we fight them. Now at the moment, we're doing what is a blockade, which is really useful. So now you'll see here that minus one from not blockaded is gone. Um, so now our siege effectiveness is increased a little bit more, so it should be a little bit easier and quicker to take this down. Uh, why am I losing men here? Because I don't have the levied pops. I'm pretty sure that's why. Of course, yeah, I no longer have the heavy inf the pops for the heavy infantry unit, which is why I'm losing them. So we do need to take this as quickly as possible before I go under the 2,000 men and I won't be able to siege it. Hopefully this buddy, this guy's not going to join me, which is a big pain. Um, Archides has insulted us, so this was our former friend. Now you can see he's taken out Lictos now. So he has taken him out and now he owns these two. We will deal with him later. And hopefully we're going to take this before I lose the men. I really hope so, because if it does, then I won't be able to take it, because I won't have enough men to be able to siege the thing down. Um, can I call you in? I can't call this guy in. He won't join. But 21% now. So each month I'm losing 50 men. So I've basically got three months to take this. Anyway, the preeminent Aristocos Adjid. Apparently this guy is a dude to know, and I have like three options. Either lose a bit of gold and gain loyalty with him. Um, send him to a fake address and gain popularity and we lose loyalty with him or I lose popularity. Here again, I like for this kind of event, I like to look at the like power base. If he's got a big power base, then I would like to know him and befriend him because power base characters are the most important. They're the ones who can pee you off the most. This guy's got no power base, so I'm just going to get a like, bit of extra popularity to increase our overall popularity gain. Right, please, 21%. Please fall. I know you want to fall. Go on, buddy. Go on, buddy. Nope. Okay, one more. 35%. Come on, please fall before I lose the amount of men required. I beg you. I literally beg you. Come on. Oh no, a little food shortage there. Come on now, it needs to fall. Please. Please, 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 please. I don't want to lose. I don't, I don't, I need to take this. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Okay, the gods, the gods blessed us. So I've actually got it. That's quite lucky. So like, next time I should pay attention. Um, but anyway, the sacking of Cadonia. What do I want to do here? I want to... Either kind of let the looting be gentle, gain a bit of gold, don't kill anybody, and gain more gold, more prestige, but kill more people, or I could just get a load more gold and kill a lot of people. Now, I don't recommend doing this if it's part of cultures that are of your culture group. Since these are Cretan, they're of our culture, of our culture, which is Cretan, and of our culture group, which is the wider Hellenistic group. So we're going to let the looting be gentle because I don't want to kill them all, because we're going to need them. Um, for because extra integrated pops of our culture give us more levies, give us more research points, more cash, more everything. Now you'll notice that we have a battle predictor here. Now this basically predicts the outcome of a battle. I never trust this. I really don't. I think it is a damn awful 
predictor, it doesn't really work properly and it doesn't often predict the right outcomes. So don't really trust this. Trust yourself. You have more men, you've prepared better, you've set up your units correctly, you outnumber the enemy, you have terrain advantage, all that sort of stuff. Just use your own head and don't trust about a predictor. Now you'll notice this guy is now sailing out to fight us because he doesn't own the land anymore, which means of course he doesn't own the port and he can't stay docked there. So he's going to come out here and he has done. So the battle commences. So we are fighting on what type of sea? I think it's coastal sea. Coastal terrain gives you... What does it do? I need to see here what coastal... I don't think I can actually see. I think it reduces combat width. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. I can't actually... Oh, it does. Here we go. Combat width, coastal sea. So coastal sea has 30 combat width, which means I can line up to 30 ships in a row. Any extra would be placed in behind as the secondary cohorts would intervene once the primary cohorts are dead. Um, but again, we don't really have 30 ships, so it doesn't really matter here. But anyway, we're fighting this guy. We are going to be flanking him with our ships because we have more men, so he's now dead. Bim, bam, boom. And hopefully we'll capture a ship. Have I captured anything? Um, did, he, did we capture a ship? We lost zero ships, and they lost zero ships. I didn't capture any, which is a shame. Yeah, I didn't capture any, which is which is annoying. I'm going to follow him over here. I do want to capture some, so I'm going to keep trying to fight. And then they lost three ships, and I gained one here, okay? So there we go. We captured one, that plus one there. So I now have a free ship, five ships instead of four. I'll bring you back to dock. If you want to repair your ships, now it's the same as military. The tab here is the same. The like Every button here is literally neither the same, apart from these down here that you need to go and check out. Um, and the same principles applied here, you have the morale, the strength, and to increase their strength, just send them into a dock, into a port, and they should um, kind of recover over time. Now we have this, we can piece out. It's our super piece. We take this now, we gain a little bit of aggressive expansion. Again, we don't gain too much because we have a claim on it, which is cool. So the claim, you see, reduces your aggressive expansion by 50%. Which is why it's always important to have claims. Claims reduce aggressive expansion. Aggressive expansion is a stability killer. So now we'll take this, which is good. And again, I'm going to pass judgment on the families because these guys are of our culture group and culture. So again, extra characters in the family is really useful. Um, Arcades plan on breaking the alliance with us. I'm going to let them break it. I don't want to break it. They can break it themselves. I think if they break it, they have a truce with me. If I break it, I have a truce. If they break it, I no longer have a truce. I don't have a truce. I think that's how it works. Uh, so we have another city here, which is quite useful. Um, this allows me now to get rid of this fort. Now, forts are expensive. Don't have too many. They cost a crap load. And, of course, you are limited to the number you can have in a province. Now, what happens is for the forts, the first fort you build in a territory costs three points. And any fort you build on top of that costs one. So, for instance... The fort in Knossos cost three points because you have this thing called fort infrastructure capacity and what it would do, one fort here costs me three points out here, so I'll be three out of five. Any fort I build in Knossos on top of that would increase the fort capacity by one. So if I had two forts in Knossos, it would be four out of five. But each fort you build in any territory other than the first one you built, it gives you three extra points. Hence the reason why I have nine. Here I have three for one. Here I've got another three because I've got one there. And here I've got another three because I've got one in this place. So here I'm going to get rid of this. Um, it's just costing us way too much. So to delete it, just go into the building section and right click. It gets rid of the fort. And I'm going to do the same here because again, I'm still over the limit. You'll see I've now lost three fort points or three infrastructure capacity points. because I've got rid of this fort. As soon as I get rid of this one, we shall go down to three. And we have done. There we go. So you now have three out of five. Um, so that's why. If you go over the limit, it costs you more gold. It's quite expensive, so I do advise you to stay within your fort infrastructure capacity. You can increase it through inventions, uh, not inventions, through traditions. You can increase it by doing the Fortify Province, which for 80 base um, political influence, you can increase the loyalty and the fort infrastructure capacity by one. Me, it shows 72 because I took military artisans innovation at the start of the game, which gave me minus 10% reduction to the military um, investment, which is this one. So that's, the, that's why it is only 72%. Now we've won the war, we can disband our armies. So I'm going to disband these guys. And you should see we have more men now, Neely, I think. Oh, no, we don't. We don't have more men. Why? I thought I was going to have more men. That is very strange. I must have lost some pops. Maybe some pops died or something. I don't know exactly how that worked, but maybe they did. Um... Have I, got into, have I got any more pops that aren't integrated? No. These are all integrated. I have more pops now. 
maybe at the end of the month we'll see at the end of the month because sometimes uh, a little quick tip by the way sometimes for the changes in modifiers or the changes in values to kick in you need to wait to the end of the month and that's when the changes kick in so at the end of the month now let's see do i have more available men no i don't so i have gone down by one something must have happened i must have promoted a pop or demoted a pop somewhere which would have changed something that's probably the reason why Anyway, now this is done, we do need to focus on what to do next. Now, Gortina, I can't take on, and I don't want to take on. Um, who's this? This is Yepetra. They're allied with quite a few people. My next target will be this guy. As soon as he breaks your alliance, Lictos will be the one to take. Um, I could probably actually take down Polarinia. They're allied with Sparta, but by the time Sparta come over here and deal with me, we're not going to have a problem. And <clears throat> in order to stop Sparta moving... What we could do is build a bigger navy, I have the gold for it, and then we could basically blockade him and stop him ferrying troops, and that would be a nice thing. I may even be able to kind of blockade him into submission. I don't know yet, we'll think about it. But anyway, let's keep rolling. I can take a drink of my coffee to actually keep my throat dry. So now we're a little bit more powerful, we have three territories, which is better than it was before. And hopefully these guys will break the alliance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send an insult. This is a little trick if you want people to break alliances and so you don't do it. Just send them an insult. They'll lose opinion with you. You gain a bit of aggressive expansion. You gain one, but yeah, they don't like you. And hopefully they'll break it. It's kind of a little beta. So if you want to kind of make sure they, yeah, bait them into losing something or breaking the alliance, it, it works pretty well. So hopefully you'll plan on stopping killing me, on stopping, sorry, um, being allied to me. Now, he's planning my demise, which means he's planning to kill me here. And I don't like that. So, he's definitely planning to attack me. But what I'm going to want is I'm going to want another buddy somewhere. And I don't have another buddy. But I have my lovely and juicy judiciary here would help us. So, what I'm going to do in provision of, Luke, of him beating me, I'm going to raise an army in October. I'm going to wait for the 23rd of October. Hopefully, he won't declare war till then. And then I can actually raise my levy and act as a deterrent. Because he's got his raised. And I don't like that. So I'm going to now raise my levies. I am going to lose research points. I am going to lose a bit of gold and stuff again. But I don't want to take the risk. I really don't. It's just way too too risky. He could declare war on me at any time. So if I can stop that then I'll be happy. And how many pops do I have in here? I have quite a few pops. Shame that I don't have any more. I should have, have, I should have a bigger levy size. But I don't know why that's not... Why that's changed, I really don't. It must be something to do with fluctuation of pops. It's the only thing I can I really think of. So, you're still planning my demise. I ain't moving anywhere, but until you have um, disbanded your men. If you disband your men, then maybe. But other than that, no. Here, I need to get more opinion with this guy. Because he's so not loyal. My aggressive expansion actually hurt me a bit. I'm going to send him a gift. A small gift here. It might help improve opinion a little bit. To get him above the, the, the what I need. So, they broke my alliance, which is good. Now, you see, they broke the alliance, so I don't have a truce with them. So that's why you don't want to break truces yourself. Get the other guy to break it, and that's fine. Now, I can take this guy on if our future joins. I'm hoping you will. Please join me, buddy. Um, but I need a little bit more loyalty. And he's not loyal at the moment. 25 loyalty. He's got more power. Well, he's not got more power, but we've got the same strength. So it basically gets his opinion down. Power related to Overlord. Minus um, 40%. Or minus 40. Uh, but anyway, the guy's disbanded his men now. So that is not much of a problem. I'm not worried about him killing me. Because he's like got no forces anymore. He's not planning my demise. So a good way to see if anyone's trying to attack you. He's raised his levies on your border. He has the planned your demise modifier. So do keep an eye out for them. So I can actually disband now. So I can actually get ready to fight this guy. So my levies are going to stand down. Don't want to keep them up too much. Um, so they're going to stand down and we shall wait a little bit. Maybe try and get a few more men. Get a few more things going. I get a, Maybe get a bit more gold. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll think of something. Anyway, the Olympic Games. Who am I going to send? Um, if you have the Olympic Games message, you only get them by playing a Greek culture or Hellenic culture. And that's the only way you can get these events. And you need to send your best guys in order to try and win it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send this researcher. which is pretty good. 10659. Send Magas. He's a pretty decent guy. He has a good chance of winning. And I need to replace the research with someone else since I've sent him away. So I'll place the next best thing, which is this guy. He's pretty decent, so I'll place you. You want to place the guys with the best stats for each category for your tech. It is really quite important. Anyway, we've got some our navy back here. I might add some extra ships in the provision for the war against Polarinia, which I will do. They're allied with Sparta, but 
I can definitely block them. He actually has six ships. Oh, because Sparta's docked there. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a navy. And I'm going to go for some extra units. So I want another trireme for three. And then I'll go for maybe one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That's five. That's ten ships. And then I want to go 11, 12. Yeah, we'll go 12, 12 ships is fine. It's going to give us a little bit of extra kind of firepower because I do want to block their units. And if we block his navy in here, which he is, which their navy is, he ain't going to be able to move anywhere. I mean, he's got, what, four ships and they are all in here. So if we can blockade this guy, we can beat him. And he, Sparta, won't be able to ferry any troops. Anyway, someone sacked a temple and it's Sparta, so I don't give a crap. They must have sacked someone's temple with a war over here. They are fighting in their own lands, so... They must have ransacked a holy site. But again, that's not my problem. Uh, Men-wise, we still haven't got enough. I still need more, though. I would like more. But I don't have more. Um, can I build anything here? What we got? Here we've got a live. I have a little bit of gold, but not enough to build anything. Actually, I think I might, actually. Let's go for... Let's see what I've got pop-wise. What are we doing? Am I promoting any? I'm promoting a few pops here. Let's go for a... Oh, what do I want to go for? I might go for... I think I'm going to go for a court of law. Oh, I can't. I don't have the gold. It's 115. I don't know why I was looking at that. I don't have any cash at all. Um, anyway, 120th Olympic Games conclude. Okay, we didn't win that. That's a shame. Um... The Accursed House of Antipatros. More news from Macedon. The eldest son is dying. Oh, well, not my problem. I really don't care. Again, if you want to kind of read the events, please feel free to press pause and you can kind of go and check them out. Youthful indiscretion. The cousin belonged to one of the lesser branches of the Chirid family has become embroiled in a scandal at court. According to eyewitnesses, the youth managed to publicly shame himself. I can either lose prestige or lose gold. I literally always take the lose prestige here because you can gain it back pretty quickly. Losing gold is a little bit more annoying. Now, this guy's disbanded his men. I might be able to take him. I think I can take him. Because before he raises his men, I could probably kind of go on his capital and block him. But then again, he's got two territories, so he could raise them from here. So no, that's not going to work for me. Anyway, liberation. I can either choose to free to get two slaves to become freemen, which means I'll make a little bit less tax, but I'll make more manpower. Or I would um, gain a little bit of gold. Now, I could do this. It might actually help us get a little bit more men for the levy. So, I'm going to do this. We'll lose a little bit of gold per month. It should go down to so like 1.84 now. Uh, 1.87. So, it's gone down to 1.84. I've got a little extra little extra freemen. So, maybe this would help with this. I know you, slaves don't count as levies <coughs> for the region. So, that didn't really take anything into account. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough indeed. Maybe it's the size of the thing. Does it get our levies down? No, it doesn't. Oh well, it's what it is. Now they've got seven ships there. It looks like they're trying to increase their naval capabilities as well. But I'm way better than you guys. And I'm going to have considerably more ships anyway. Which means I'm going to be able to flank him. I think this guy is the next one we want to take out. Following you, we need it to form Crete as well. So, no reason why. You might as well take it. What are you doing? You've got men over there. Why? He's raised his he's raised his soldiers. Why has he done that? I don't really know why he has. Oh well, we'll have to keep a watch on him. Now we have ten ships. We're close to being able to do this. What about you? Do you like me now? At thirty, I think if I raise my forces, I can bring him in, and that would be more than enough to take on Polarinia. Easy, 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 easy. And it give us another nice city, which then might increase the actual men we have, or the men I can levy. Uh, I still make enough gold. One more ship unit is fine. A uh, ship of state? Oh, what's this one? Apparently a philosopher has arrived and he wants to become philosophos instead. Are you any good? You've got crap zeal, so no. Your philosophos is the guy in government up here. Um, in officers, and you'll see it is this guy. He needs zeal for it. I'm not giving it to him. He's got ze one zeal. He's crap. We're going to send the Raven Lunatic away. I gained a little bit of popularity for doing so. So that's the reason behind that. Now, can I ally anybody? Would like anyone want to be my friend? I might be able to get an alliance. I could probably get an alliance with Rhodes. 
I mean, Rhodes would be a nice friend to have over here. They could be potentially useful. Especially against Gortina. And I could do with an extra friend. I suppose I could. Yeah, let's ally Rhodes. Let's get an alliance going. Why not? It gives us a friend over here, to, uh, like a, uh, a decent friend that's going to be able to ferry some troops if I ever need them. So why not? Why not? Why not? Anyway, I think it's time to get ready for another war. I have the navy. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Sparta don't have a navy at all. These guys have seven ships. I'm going to literally nearly double it. And I might get another one, actually. I might build to the navy a little bit more. I'll get one of each, actually. We'll double it. We'll make it, like, 14 ships, which is double his. I have the advantage. And they will join progressively as, um, as like, we blockade. So I'm going to blockade and I'm going to stop them from coming out. So what we're going to do here is I'm now going to raise my levies. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to send them over here. I'm going to get them on the border. As per usual, we're going to do, like, lightning strikes. You put them on the border and that kind of stops them. Barters move some of their ships around. So we do need to kind of pay attention when we do fight because we're going to probably try and use them to bring them over here. Um, oh, he's raised his forces? Oh, they're at war with Gortina. Okay, we need to fight. Now. Yeah, he's disloyal, so he's not joining. Maybe at the end of the month. I don't give... I've not given you access, so he can't join. Hopefully at the end of the month we should... No, I don't have enough. Are you kidding me? I need a little bit more. Now, is there anything I can have to increase subject loyalty? It might be something in the in the omens. I don't think there is, though. Yeah, there's nothing there. No, I'm not giving you access. It's not going to happen. I'm going to call down another omen, and I'm going to go for the Freeman Happiness again. Just to make our pops a little bit happier. Can I give you anything else? Can I give you another gift? What did the gift do at the moment? Have I give you a gift? It's going to increase it by two. It might help. But let's try it out. We'll see at the end of the month if it worked. I'm hoping it is going to work. Please. Oh, God, one. I'm missing one point. I'm literally missing one point. Okay, I have a solution. There's always a solution. You've got to think about it. Now, I'm going to go to my national ideas. I'm going to change a policy here. I'm going to get rid of the tax farming for the slave output plus 20%. Actually, no. I'm going to get rid of the amount of armies. And I'm going to go for... Here, Hospitium. This allows me to increase maximum opinion with people by plus 33%. So we can increase opinion 33% more. If I do this now, what's going to happen is we're going to be able to increase this a bit more and hopefully get their opinion up one more tick. And when we get it at one more tick, it's going to be more than enough to deal with. Them. So you guys are going to get ready to blockade. We're going to wait. Probably next month it would work and I would have 33 opinion with them. I hope so anyway. Um, peculating official, what's this? He's basically been a... He's basically been spending a lot of money from our own treasury. So I can either recuperate the losses, forfeit his position, or give him capital punishment. Only real punishment will deter embezzlers. Yeah, I'm going to do that. We'll give him a real punishment. I get a bit of tyranny. He loses loyalty. I get all my gold back. Um, but I'm not bothered, really. It just gives me a bit of gold. And since he's not that powerful, it's not really much of an issue. Um, so I'm going to put this guy. You're really good, actually. You're actually better than the other dude. Let's do 32. Maybe next month it would work for us. I hope so. Yep, there we go. See, it worked. We're at 33 now. And there the threshold of loyalty is hit. So this guy's going to join. Um, Road won't join, but I don't care. But I am just going to take him on now with this. So let's do this. I'm going to strike you pretty quickly. So we'll take Polarinia. Sparta's going to join, but I literally don't care. Because I can easily deal with you. But we'll do that. So now I'm taking you on. This guy, I'm going to authorize attachments. That means you're going to join, hopefully, and bring your men in. Um... And what I'm going to do now is just change this back in order to get the extra amount of armies. There we go. Problem solved. There's always a solution to everything. Um, now, hopefully, this guy's going to join me. Yeah, he's attacking me for some reason. What is my commander's marshal? Oh, crap. Two? He's two as well, though. It's literally bad. Um, 
Right, is there anything I can take to help to like solve the problem? I have got the extra... Got the extra morale from the idea slot. Anything else? Not really. So it's basically going to be random here. Do I have the terrain advantage? Do I have terrain? I don't have terrain advantage, which is a shame. I wonder why he can't raise any. Oh, he is. He's coming in now. Oh my god, why the hell did I lose so much morale there? That is not cool. Oh my god, I'm literally being crushed here. What the hell? Yeah, I'm going to retreat back over here. Now, if you want to retreat, just get your army and click on a location and it brings them to where you retreat them. Hopefully you're going to deal with him. I want to retreat to recover some manpower. Thank God I've got some. He's got more men and he should have a better commander. Yeah, he's going to win it for us. Thank God for that. Jesus Christ, thank God he joined. Good, good, good. Well done, buddy. That is quite lucky. Quite juicy, I have to say. Whoa, there's a 41 pirate stack there. Are you kidding me? Okay, so our guys have got back home and they're going to be recovering. So I'm going to put you on unit reorganization. And this is a good, actually, quite a good opportunity to show you how this works. So it's going to increase the morale recovery rate. Um, as you can see, unit reorganization increases it by 10%. And it's going to go up quicker and we're going to replenish our forces a lot quicker as well. So what I need to do is go here. He actually occupied my city there, which is really annoying. And um, you're going to go here. You're going to recover army morale. The one offers friendship. It's our client. Oh, it is. That's good. That's going to... Oh, our vassal, sorry. He's going to increase opinion of him by plus 50, which will make him more loyal to us, which I like. Here, we're going to be recovering morale, which means we're going to do it quicker than this guy because he's not recovering any morale. We have it, and we're doing it a lot quicker. Which means we're going to get more morale faster, and then I'm going to be able to take him out. All right, come on, bud. One more month, I think, would be fine, and then I can actually deal with him. Maybe one more month or another month after. Yeah, I have enough morale there. Let's go and deal with this guy. Actually, no, I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. I'll wait a little bit longer. Wait a tiny bit longer. Get a little bit of extra morale going, and then we'll definitely strike on the guy. You always want to make sure you have more morale than the dude. It really is that important. Um, now I have more morale. I think I can do this. I'm going to give it a go. Hopefully the friend will join us. Our kind of guy will. Um, so let's see what's going on. So, um, this gives me a quick opportunity to explain how battles work. So basically, troops fight off against each other, opposite of each other. Um, if you have extra units, you can flank, but their flanking depends on their maneuver. Again, go and check out the guide to battles I did. It really explains everything in detail and will help you understand everything as quickly as possible. Um, so anyway, we're fighting. Are we going to win this? I think we should. We have more morale, so I'm fairly confident that we're going to beat him. There yeah, we are. We are, we are, we are. So he's dead. He's won. We beat him pretty quickly. I'm going to take this back. But then I'm going to quickly go and smash him again. Just so we can actually get rid of him. I want to occupy back my city. Now we'll deal with him here. We should be able to stack wipe him. I'm hoping we can stack wipe him. No, we didn't. So he's retreating there and then probably coming back towards me. I don't know where he's going now, to be honest. Okay, so he's over there. We're going to go over here and help siege this down quickly. Nope, Gortina, we're not having military access, bud. That's not going to happen. So here I'm going to help him out. Because I literally... He doesn't have enough men to siege it. But together we do, which is fine. So now we should be sieging this down. We've also got the blockade going, which has got rid of his kind of minus one to the siege progress. I do need to pay attention to see if there's any Spartan troops coming, but I don't think so. Should be fine. And um, he's stuck over here for the moment. I don't think he's going to be doing too much more. Mithridatic ambition. So basically, um, the Mithridates just formed his own kingdom over here. That's interesting. I really want to play as them at some time. I should. I really should. So all we need to do now is pretty much wait to occupy this. And once this is done, I can peace out and, of course, get a little bit more stuff. Um, what's this here? Here we gain wise. Apparently we gain a trait wise, which gives us national citizen output, which is cool. Which means our citizens produce more, which means more research points and more manpower. Which is always quite nice. Um, here we're at, what, minus 28% now. Yeah, it's really just a question of waiting. And then once that's finished, we can focus on taking out maybe this guy. This guy would be nice to take out. Actually, Gortina's fighting him already. That's interesting. Who's going to win this? I think Gortina might actually win this. Which means they're going to take all of this. That's not something I want. 
die. Really, that's not good, because I really don't want them to do that. That means they're going to get more land, and they're going to be equal in size. Of course. And then they've got all the kind of eastern side of the island. Anyway, Sparta's over here. They're still fighting over there. They can't ferry any troops across, so we're pretty much fine. Here at 14%. It should go pretty quickly now. Probably maybe another couple of siege ticks, and then that's going to fall. And it's been going pretty well so far, I have to say. I have to say, it's been going pretty, pretty decently. I'm just going to want to have to try and deal with this guy next. Um, anyway, friends across borders. Um, I can improve Gortina's opinion on this for the cost of 8 gold. And I might actually do that just to keep them on like on good terms for the moment. Because I don't want them declaring war on me. If they do, that's going to be a really annoying thing. Um, I have lost a fair bit of manpower though, which is really annoying. And it's going to take us a bit of time to get that back. Now you may be wondering here, what's we'll Occupy this? I won't be able to piece out because Sparta's fighting, but I can. Because I basically occupy the war goal and all of his land, and then I can just peace out. Once you occupy, once you occupy someone's land entirely, you can just peace out. Like now, for instance, super peace like this. It says no, but he will accept. So we'll give it a go. There we go. You see, it's just the game just basically lied to you there. <laughs> but if you occupy the land, you can take it. Again, our patch judgment on the families will welcome them all in because they are our culture group, which gives us more potential characters. Um, and now. Who's this? That's Gortina. This is Arcades. I might let them fight it out. Yeah, I'm going to let these guys fight it out and we'll see what happens. Hopefully they're going to lose a lot of manpower. So what we'll do in the meantime here, we'll just disband these fellas. And so now I have a little bit more men. And there we go. So now we have more pops. You can see we've increased our um, levy size considerably. So we have six archers in there now, which is fantastic. It is a lot more... Here I am going to get rid of the fort because of course we don't have the fort infrastructure to maintain it. Um, I might actually spend a point in the military artisans here to increase it. It could be done. And we have another trade route which is pretty cool as well which I am definitely going to invest in. Uh, but anyway I'm going to end the video here. The people thank you so much for joining me. Um, we'll continue with the next one. We'll continue the tutorial creep campaign. Maybe go to war probably. Um, probably do a war straight away on these guys and just do like a big like three way war for whatever land um, Arcades has got. Um, or I might actually go against um, Praesos. Praesos is fairly easy to take. I have ships and I can definitely occupy this. Um, so I might actually go over there while they're fighting. I think that's going to be the plan. Uh, but anyway, as usual, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed things and it did help you, please don't hesitate to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see some more Imperial Realm content, then of course, please consider subscribing to the channel for more. It really does help. And with that said and done, thank you so much for being here. And I'll hopefully catch you all in the next one. Bye for now.